perfect complements. So in this recording, we're going to look at uh, how do you draw an indifference curve for the perfect complements? How do you get the demand functions for perfect complements? What is the angel curve and income of a curve for perfect complements? Are these goods ordinary good or Giffen good? Are these normal or inferior? And are these substitutes or complements? I mean, just I'm just doing this because you know that these are these are complements. And uh, what is the price elasticity of demand? Own price elasticity, cross price elasticity, and income elasticity, right? So you must have seen the video on Copdeclus utility function, uh, which is there in the link below. So you can probably just look at it earlier before looking at this video so that you have a proper understanding. So I won't be writing all the definitions again, which we have already done in the earlier video. Okay, so this uh, perfect complement. So they are given by this kind of utility function, u equals to min of x y. Well, min of a x b y, a x comma b y. That's a general form of the utility function. There is a separate recording on which we have talked about that. Why do you have this as the form of the utility function for the perfect complements? But uh, here, so given this is what their utility function is, let us try to derive or draw an indifference curve. So along an indifference curve, all the points are going to give you the same utility. So you can just assume some utility here. So let's say four equals to min of x, y, right? Well, all the points which are going to give you 4, for example, 5, 4, min of 5, 4 is 4, 4, 5, min of 4, 5 is 4, 4, 4, min of 4, 4 is 4, right? So when you will draw this, mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't give you a straight line which you want. It has still not given you. I'm so sorry about that. Now it is there. Okay. It's gone. Right. So let's make it a rule that whenever you have a, a kinky function, so this guy is a kinky function because of the presence of this min out here. So you, you may have min or a max. So whenever you have a kink in the indifference curve, you'll draw that kink line first. So here the kink is given by x equals to y. In case if it would happen, min of ax comma by, the kink would have been given by ax equals to by. Or if min of 2x comma y, kink would have been given by 2x equals to y. So here in this case, kink line is x equals to y. So this is what you have, x equals to y. So along this line, all the points are going to give you the same, uh, sorry, along this line, all the points uh, will be such where x is equal to y, right? So you pick up one from here, let's say, so one of x, that will be equal to one of y out here and so on and so on, so, right? So what about this thing? Let us say this, hmm? so, for example, so you have x equals to 1 here and let's say y equals to 4, let's say something. I'm just giving an example. So the amount of x is less and the amount of y is more. So this region, which is above this x equals to y line, you have x less than y. Hmm? What about this region? You may just rub this, you don't need it. What about this region? For example, this. So you have x here and y here. So as you guys could see, the amount of the x you have more and the amount of y you have, which is less. So let's say here x is four and y is one. Hmm. So the amount of x which you have is more and the amount of y which you have is less. Uh, so 
this region which is below this line is x equal x greater than y okay now again look at the utility function which you had i just use these numbers in the meanwhile so you have u equals to min of x y now there are only three possibilities which are there one x could be greater than y or x could be less than y or x could be equal to y right so when x is greater than y your utility is what beta y because you'll pick up the one which is smaller and for example let's say you pick up utility 4 so this is 4 equals to y hmm? 4 equals to y so you have uh, for x greater than y you have like this so this is let's say 4 and you will be drawing this for this region no? for x greater than y of course this this point is not included here because this is x greater than y so apart from this point you with me so x equal you have taken a y equals to 4 and uh, this is this region x greater than y and you have drawn this line so for this region x greater than y your utility is u equals to y that's what you have done hmm? for x greater than y which one is the minimum y uh, sorry x hmm? so for x less than y your utility is u is equal to x so you've drawn it for this region x less than y for x equals to y that is just a point out here that is just a point out here so this becomes your utility function this becomes your utility function you could have also drawn this using a table out here so say for example this point is 4 4 hmm? this point is let's say 5 4 and this point is let's say 4 5 something like this so join these three points and you'll be getting this curve hmm? so one thing is there you've drawn what is an indifference curve that's done how do you get the demand functions for this so can you use lagrange here no you can't you cannot use lagrange out here the reason being because this is a kinky function and lagrange could only be used only for the differentiable functions well i cannot use lagrange but maybe i can use some logic so given this budget line which is not coming out to be straight given this budget line I'm just asking myself, what is the highest indifference curve I can draw? Is this the highest? Hmm? No. Given this budget line, I can go still further. I can go still further till here. Hmm? And uh, what will happen? I will be consuming at this particular point. What are the characteristics of these points? So one, this is satisfying the budget. Of course, optimal has to satisfy the budget. And uh, at this particular point, X is equal to Y. So you're consuming at kink. So as you guys could see, this point is satisfying the budget. And at this particular point, X is also equal to Y. Well, so what you can write is this. So. At optimum x equals to y p1 x plus p2 y equals to n p1 x plus p2 in place of y you guys can write x so you will be getting x star as m upon p1 plus p2 and since x is equal to y <clears throat> so y star is also m upon p1 plus p2 these are martial and demand functions these are dependent upon 
income and prices. These are Marshall and demand functions and these are dependent upon income and prices. Right, so we've done this. Okay, whether this is an ordinary good or what? So let's look at for X star. Well, X star is M upon P1 plus P2. Del X star by del P1 is going to be minus M upon P1 plus P2 per square. So this is going to be negative. And that's what you wanted, right? So as the price of the good is going to increase, you're going to demand less of this commodity. Hence, this is an ordinary good. Hmm. Okay. Is this normal or inferior? So you have already X star as this. So can you just find out what is del X star by del M? That is going to be 1 upon P1 plus P2, which is greater than 0. So as your income is going to increase, you're going to demand more of the commodity. And hence, this is a normal good. This is a normal good. Okay. Are these substitute complements? Of course, they're going to be uh, complements. So you can just write it this way. So del X star by del P2. So that is how the demand for X is going to change when the price of Y is going to change. So it is minus M upon These are complements, so there is nothing surprising out here. Of course, these are complements. Okay. <clears throat> then what is an angel curve for this? Okay. So, well, X star is M upon P1 plus P2. So, this is what an angel curve. for a given level of prices. Uh, so this is drawn in width space. So you have income out here, you have X out here. Hmm? Well, that's fine. So what you can probably just write it like this. So it is P1 plus P2 x star equals to m so p1 plus p2 dx star equals to dm and then dm by dx star it's going to be this p1 plus p2 only so it will have a slope this is what my angel curve is and the slope of the angel curve is dm by dx star, which is p1 plus p2, right? Okay. Then you have what? Mm, what is going to be the income of a curve? Income of a curve is drawn in x, y space, right? Well, you already have x star as m upon p1 plus p2, y star as m upon p1 plus p2, so income of a curve is as your income is going to increase how is your optimal going to change well so you have y out here x out here x equals to y hmm? okay when when prices were given, uh, sorry, yeah, when budget was given by this, your equilibrium was E1. Hmm? When income increases, 
So budget line, it shifts outward in a parallel fashion and your equilibrium also changes. So when you just join these equilibrium points is what you get as the income of a curve. So what are these, what is the locus of these equilibrium points here? X1 equals to X2. And you can also see this since M upon P1 plus P2 is equal to, is, is same for both of them. So it is just X equals to Y. So income of a curve. At X1 star, it is X star. equals to y star that's one thing then what is the own price elasticity hmm? what is the own price elasticity so can i make the changes out here only hmm? it becomes easier for me so what i can do okay i should not be unnecessarily Doing this way. Okay. What is the own price elasticity? Own price elasticity is del x star by del p1 upon p1 by x star. Well, you know what is x star? M upon p1 plus p2. So del x star by del p1 is minus m upon p1 plus p2 ka square into p1 upon x star. x star is what? m upon p1 plus p2. So 1 p1 plus p2 will get cancelled out with this. This m and m will get cancelled out. And you have minus p1 whole upon p1 plus p2. Right. Then you have cross price elasticity. Hmm. Cross price elasticity is del x star by del p2 into p2 by x star. Right. That is how. Uh, what is the percentage change in the quantity demanded of x when there is a percentage change in the in the price of y, right? So in case if the uh, y's price is going to increase by 1%, what is going to be the change in the percentage change in the quantity demanded of x? That is cross price elasticity. So del x star by del p2 is minus m upon p1 plus p2 ka whole square into P2 upon X star, X star is And you have income elasticity. If there is a 1% change in income, what is going to be the percentage change in the quantity demanded, right? Del x star by del m to m by x star. So del x star by del m is minus 1 upon p1 plus p2 into m by x star. x star is M upon P1 plus P2. So that is going to be 1. Hmm? Right, beta? So this is uh, what I wanted to do in this particular recording. So I think we have done all of them. Hmm? Okay. So next time, uh, we're going to see all of this for some other utility function. Say, for example, perfect substitutes or quasi-linear function.